I did it. I finally created a simple effective cheat sheet for more cinematic drone footage. Everything you need, it's all here in one place. So let's get started. Step one, it's a new way for you to approach your footage right before you start recording. It's a mindset that many professional cinematographers and photographers, they just live by. When I learned this, man, it really helped me out tremendously. So I wanna share it with you. So the first item on this cheat sheet is the most fundamental. Construct your scene. Because normally we think of cameras as documenting our scene. We hit record, bang out a few angles, get home, go to editing, pick out the best shots, have a drink, kiss the wife, go to sleep. But no longer, because now you're no longer a pilot who documents a scene. You're a cinematographer with a flying camera. Pretty cool. Does a cinematographer document a scene? Hell no. Cinematographers do the things we're covering in today's episode. Make creative decisions to make the subject look its best by constructing the scene, which is sculpting light, isolating the subject, layering, leading lines, and so much more. Okay, so how do you actually put that into action while you're flying? Here's our seven steps in this cinematic drone cheat sheet. First is your new mindset we talked about as a cinematographer who intentionally constructs your scenes. Second, find a worthy subject to focus on. I know it seems tragically obvious, but I still see a lot of beginner footage where they're just wandering. Listen, you can have drone footage that has stunning landscape and a beautiful color grade, but that footage is gonna get really boring quickly if you don't get to a subject and some sort of storytelling. Beginners might not coalesce storytelling with cinematic footage, but I'm telling you right now, subject is the bedrock of cinematic footage. The third step on our list, sculpt the light. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're getting to the various aspects of constructing your scene. So let's examine what it means to sculpt light. Photographers sometimes refer to it as shaping light. When you arrive at a scene and find a worthy subject, the very first thing I always do is look carefully at how the sunlight is falling on the subject. I look closely at what the highlights are doing to the details in the color of the subject. Then I look at the quality of the shadows, meaning can I still see details? Are the shadows short and intense or are they long and soft shadows like a golden hour? And this next step is crucial. How can I position my camera so the light falling on my subject will better show the important features of the subject? Take those few seconds right there before you start recording and ask yourself that question again. How can I carefully reposition my camera right now so the angle of the sunlight will better highlight the defining features of my subject? Light is the king. The single biggest determinant of cinematic footage is how the sunlight is hitting your subject. While you're recording, oh beginners, don't think you can just put on a LUT in post and make your footage cinematic. Color grading is the lipstick. If you put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. That's why color grading is last on this list. So the phrase sculpting light or shaping light is referring to adjusting and modifying the light and the orientation to your subject and the camera. <laughs> now, listen up drone gangsters. When your goal is cinematic footage, there's always exceptions to every rule. Example, look at this scene. I was thrilled when I shot this. The regular viewers of the channel here are so sick of this shot by now. <laughs> On a technical level, this shot is no bueno because the highlights are blown out, meaning there's no detail left at all in those bright spots. And the shadows are crushed, meaning zero detail in the shadows. But this shot is cinematic as all hell. That is why I ignore specs. 
I am not obsessed with getting the newest drone with the best capabilities. It does not matter to me. I'm obsessed with lighting and composition, not specs and settings. Because, <laughs> listen to me, lighting and composition are what generate emotions within the viewer. Guys that pixel peep and they're obsessed with manual exposure and motion blur and filters, that stuff does not generate emotions in the viewer. That stuff may get you a little closer to technically better images, but who cares if the content is lifeless and dull and doesn't generate emotions within your viewers? Developing your eye for composition and lighting, that's what's gonna result in your footage generating emotions. I ain't saying it's easy. It's gonna take a long time of dedicated practice, but that's when you become an artist, when you start to stir emotions within the viewer. I heard a movie director once say that Hollywood is in the emotional transportation business. That really changed the way I view having a camera in my hand, how I approach my creative process and my goal with editing. I love that. Here's a great visual representation of this to help you remember it. Always think of this as a triangle, a very important triangle. Your drone, your subject, and our friendly nuclear fusion reactor up in the sky. The orientation of these three in relation to each other that's the magic sauce that will deliver the esteemed elusive cinematic goodness you desire. So when your camera's up in the sky, you found a strong subject, before you start recording, remember this triangle. And remember this one single most important sentence. Study how the sunlight is hitting your subject and figure out how to make it better. If you do just that one thing for the rest of the year, I guarantee your footage will improve dramatically. Next on our cinematic drone cheat sheet is camera angle and camera movement. Camera angle we just mentioned in relation to sculpting light to best highlight the subject. But a very important secondary consideration now to keep in mind as you're doing that, camera angle now impacts your composition. So you have this balance of carefully studying how the sunlight is hitting your subject and also studying the background, considering things like the rule of thirds, uh, visual weight, framing, leading lines, eliminating distracting elements in your shot, like, you know, a telephone pole, a parked car, the slow implosion of the global financial markets. So this balance of camera position in relation to your subject right before you start recording, this is where all the magic happens. All the creative decisions from this point on are now relating to composition and storytelling. Composition is a very dense subject with lots of considerations. This could be a 20 hour masterclass just on composition decisions right here at this point. But this episode's just a quick cheat sheet. So I'm gonna tragically oversimplify it right now. I picked out the three most important rules of composition specifically for our drones. This is totally subjective and this is my opinion after years of doing specifically this. So apply these three rules of composition after you found your subject and determine the best lighting for your subject. Now, these three rules of composition got to be performed in this order. First, decide on the rule of thirds or the rule of symmetry. So you know, decide if you prefer your subject in one of those third quadrants or you prefer a perfectly center framed shot. Secondly, the rule of simplification, which is to reposition the camera to eliminate any distracting unnecessary objects in the frame, hugely important. You can fine tune in editing by cropping, but you must employ major cropping while the camera's in position and about to record your scene. Third, lastly, the rule of visual weight. If an item in the shot is large, it's said to have more visual weight. If an item in the scene is super bright in color or has a really strong pattern, it's said to have more visual weight. And there's many others. You don't need to memorize all those little details about this uh, rule of composition. The bottom line here is it's all about 
balance in the scene. Now I'm going to put a link down below to a great explanation of the rule of visual weight. Just read it once, you'll understand the basis of it, then you'll spend the rest of your life practicing it. It definitely becomes second nature quickly. It's an intuition on how to compose your shots. That's when people will start to say, hey, you got a good eye, kid. Okay, so there's many rules of composition, but when our drone is hovering in position, impatiently waiting for you to hit the record button, we only have several seconds to make these creative decisions. That's why I picked out only the three most important composition considerations. Now, camera movement. So we found our subject. We analyzed how the sunlight is hitting it, made some fine adjustments, then made some additional fine adjustments based on those three rules of composition in our scene. Lastly, before we start recording, decide on a flight path you want the camera to move across. I want to restate something important I said in a prior tutorial. The less you move your drone while recording, the more emphasis it puts on the composition. Here's an amazing practice technique for composition that will really help you. When you have a scene with a moving subject, I recommend spending about half of your recording time with zero drone movement, zero camera movement. When you get home and you look at that footage, oh, it's probably gonna seem pretty boring. And it's because of weak cinematography, weak subject, bad lighting, maybe a combination of all of the above. Because constant camera movement is a crutch that can mask weak cinematography. So when you practice your cinematography with no camera movement, it'll really highlight your weaknesses and kind of force you to confront them and notice them and then make adjustments for your next flight. A final note on drone movement in your scene for more cinematic footage, and this is an important one. The more details present in your shot, the slower you wanna move your camera, your drone. Now this is a guideline, it's not a hard fast rule, but the reason cinematographers observe this is in very busy scenes like this one here, there's just so many details for the viewer to absorb. The moving traffic on the bridge here, the beautiful skyline, the movement of the water, the park on the lower left. If the drone were buzzing fast and panning and tilting, all those beautiful cinematic details would be lost because the viewer can't process all of those fine details in the shot quickly. So the speed of the drone and the camera movement plays a big role here. So again, if you have a scene with a moving subject, spend like half of your time recording it with no camera movement. And when you get home to your computer and you analyze the footage, figure out how you could improve it with composition and lighting. And if you've got a lot of details, you wanna try and remember to move a little bit slower. Cool, I like that. Now, before we move to the next section, it occurred to me to see if I could rank everything we cover in this episode. So I made this pie chart, ranking their importance for more professional looking footage. Of course, this is subjective. This is just my opinion based on my experience, but I stand by this. I think it's a good visual representation of how I would assign importance and how I spend my time on each of these. Listen, I fully understand that the color grade has the biggest immediate impact as soon as someone sees it. So the reason that I rank it as least important and I personally spend the least amount of time on it is because I learned something very important when I was a beginner. I wasted all of my time tweaking colors and studying LUTs and fussing over picture profiles and filters and what combination of all of those would unlock cinematic glory? Thinking the magic to cinematic footage was in the color grading. But in the end, the footage still sucked because my cinematography skills sucked. Now, I spend all of my time crafting beautiful footage and now the color grade is just a very quick tweak. So here's my point. When you get your exposure correct and you have strong cinematography, the color grade should be quick and easy. So that's why I spend the least amount of time on it, even though it's the first thing that gets noticed. I encourage beginners to find joy in spending their time studying and practicing the timeless fundamentals of lighting and composition. That's what really worked for me. That's why I'm sharing it 
So give it a try for a few months. So part two of this tutorial is coming shortly. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel here and hit that notification button down there so you don't miss it. I'm adding two additional sections right now that might be some of my best work. <laughs> All right. Thank you for watching my flying filmmaker friends. I'll see you in the next one.